Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Gorhamian here with Misfit Studios with a little tutorial video on Space Engineers. Um, we're actually going to be doing a few of these. This one here is going to be how to jump into a creative mode game and kind of the HUD and the movement of um, your character in Space Engineers. Okay, so first off, what we're going to do is as soon as you jump into Space Engineers, this is what you're going to see. This is the main menu. Um, you're not going to see continue game, obviously, because you won't have any saved games. So what we're going to do is we're going to click new game. Over here is the scenarios, okay? These, um, these three scenarios are the um, base scenarios that you can play to kind of teach you, you know, how Space Engineers works. They do a good job, don't get me wrong, I'm just not a huge fan of how they teach you, okay? There, there isn't a very straightforward, hey, this is how you do this, this is how you do that. I mean, there is and there isn't. Um, if you want to know what I mean, jump into those, please, by all means, you can play those. Um, those are, you know, linear storylines, and so you can, you can get into that. The next tab is the workshop, so it's going to show anything from um, the Steam workshop that you've installed or downloaded if you've played it before. Um, so now what we're going to jump into is these are the different planets or, you know, bodies that you could, you know, um, jump onto. There's a moon base, um, red ship star system is very blank, but it's, you know, a little, a little star system that you show up in. Um, we're actually going to start on alien planet. So we're going to actually click creative because we're not going to be playing in survival mode. Survival mode, of course, is just like it sounds. You know, if you are, you know, new to space engineers, think of it like, um, Minecraft. Okay. It's the exact same thing between survival and creative. You know, the same rules apply in each one. Um, we're actually going to keep the name here, keep the description blank. It's not a big deal. We're actually going to play an offline because I'm not going to have any of my friends join. But you can um, be on private, friends, and public. You can actually have, you know, your friends on Steam, you know, join while you're playing. Um, I'm going to keep autosave feature on because that's very important if you're, you know, building anything with any amount of size, or actually, even if you're building small things, if it's detailed, you want to have that autosave just in case something happens. So we're going to go ahead and click the start, and we're going to launch into it, and we will see you guys there. Okay, so now that we have loaded into our little world, this little alien planet that we're on, um, this is what we're going to see, okay? Um, don't worry about the experimental mode up in the top right corner. That's not going to be turned on in default. We can go in that into detail in a little later video. Um, anyways... So over on the left side, you can see um, optional priorities. These aren't we aren't going to follow because we're in creative, and so um, we don't really need to. So defend against pirates, expand to base facilities, ensure you have enough solar panels to provide your sh ships with energy. Um, inside this, I don't know if this alien planet has got atmosphere or not. Apparently it does because that was pressurized. We're going to shut that. Um, so just like any other first-person shooter game, um, the controls are just like any other one on PC. They really are. Um, there's nothing extra in Space Engineers that has... I mean, there is. Don't get me wrong. There is a lot of extra different controls that you can have. Um, but as far as the very basic um, first-person view, third-person view controls to move your character, to move your mouse and your camera around the exact same with any other first-person shooter. So, looking at the HUD firstly is what we're going to be doing today. Um, down in the lower left corner, you're going to see these J, X, O, and L. And, of course, those are going to coordinate with keys on your keyboard. The first one, J, is your helmet visor, you know, whether you can open or close that. Um, if you're in survival mode, if you are in a hostile environment, like an environment like the moon or in outer space or somewhere that is not... Um, got an atmosphere that humans can survive in, you will start to take damage if that is open. To the right of that is X, is your jetpack. You hit that, of course, it'll turn it on and you can use your jetpack to fly around. Click it again, it'll shut it off, you'll fall to the ground. And of course, if you're going too fast and you run into something or if you fall from a height that's too high, then you will take damage too. The very next one over to the right is O, and what that is is your personal radio beacon. And so if you're playing with friends, that is going to show your location within a proximity so your friends can see you. Right next to your radio signal is L, which is your flashlight. Of course, we can't see it here, so let's go over and see. See, you've got your, you know, those two little circles are lights on either side of your um, helmet that they turn on and off. 
Okay. Now underneath those hotkeys are four different bars. Top bar being your health, bar underneath that is your oxygen, and then energy underneath that, and then the very last bar is hydrogen. Okay, your health, of course, is pretty self-explanatory. It's your HP for your character. Um, underneath your health bar, your oxygen bar, again, very self-explanatory, is the oxygen being consumed within your spacesuit. Um, with your visor closed, you're obviously going to be consuming oxygen. Now, remember, these, all these vital signs are going to be in survival mode, okay? Since we're in creative mode, we're not going to lose any of those. We can use as much energy, we can use as much hydrogen, we can use as much oxygen as we want. Those values will never change. Underneath your oxygen is your energy. That is going to be your flashlight and different tools that you have in your hand, like your drill, your grinder. Um, your torch is going to use hydrogen, which is that last bar at the bottom, as l along with your jetpack. So if you hit your jetpack, since we're in creative, like I said, that will never change. Now, if you're in survival, that will be, you know, something that is consumed over time, depending on how much you're using either your torch or your jetpack, okay? Right next to all those little bars is your speedometer. It is measured in meters per second, and that will change depending on, of course, your speed. Okay, you can see it it climb. Um, max speed in the game, I believe, is like 104 meters per second, even within a ship. I mean, of course, there are jump drives and stuff too, but that's, you know, quite a ways down the road. Um, and then over to the right of your speedometer is your dampeners. Okay, now dampeners are really important when you are flying. Um, and what that does is when you turn your dampeners off, you'll actually fall. Now your jetpack stays on, okay? It just doesn't allow you to stay at an altitude, okay? You hit... no, oh, no, let's turn that back on. You turn your dampeners back on, it allows you to hover. Okay, and it also allows you to slow down as soon as you let go of the throttle. See, so if you speed forward, let go of everything, it'll actually slow you to a stop. Now, if you speed forward and turn those dampeners off and let go of everything, you'll still have forward momentum. Okay, it won't ever start to slow you down. Let's head back. And to jump into third person it is just V on your keyboard. V is in Victor. Okay, so next to your um, dampeners hotkey is your toolbar. Okay, this toolbar is going to be the bread and butter of your space engineer's experience, I promise. This will be how you place blocks, how you change blocks, how you select blocks, and it will be the lifeline of space engineers, okay? So, of course, keys 1 through 0, 0 being default at, well, these are going to be the default keys within creative mode. These will all be blank, of course, with survival. Um, the 0 key is going to be your hands. We're going to hit the 1 just to bring up a block of some sort. You hit 0, and of course, it'll go back to, um, go back to your free hands, okay? So, to the right of that, you're going to see artificial gravity and planetary gravity, okay? So, artificial gravity is going to be if you put down any, um, gravity generators. Those are going to be your artificial gravity because they're not a planet or a star or a asteroid or a moon that you're on, okay? Underneath that is your planetary gravity. Those are going to be your planets, your stars, your moons, your, you know, asteroids, whatever you're on, standing on it, it'll show you that gravity. This is going to be 1.1 Gs because this is going to be, um, more than what gravity is on Earth. Of course, gravity on Earth is 1 G. That's, that's planetary gravity as you're standing on Earth. Since this is not Earth, the gravity here is going to be different. So it looks like this planet is a little larger than Earth, so it's going to have a little higher gravity. To the right of your gravity is going to be an artificial horizon. Okay, this is going to be very helpful when you're mining, especially when you're underground and you don't have a sense of what is up. Um, now, if you're also in space, you're not going to have an artificial, you're not going to have a horizon because there is no horizon. There is no technical up or down in space, okay? In that 3D space, there is no, you know, left, right, up, and down. So if you look at that um, artificial horizon, as you move my crosshair up and below the actual horizon of the planet, you can see that little solid section will follow the horizon so it kind of shows you if any of you play you know any flight simulators or anything like that it will you know those are that works the exact same way in those okay now what i'm going to do is underneath your um toolbar is 
different alerts. It says O2 is low and it's freezing temperatures, which means it's cold, so you're going to be consuming a little bit more energy and you're going to be consuming a little bit more oxygen. I don't know why it says O2 is low because it's full and we're in creative and so we're not losing any, so that's not, you know, something that we need to worry about. But those little alerts will show up there if you're playing survival mode. Okay, so now getting into a little bit more in-depth in the HUD, you can see these little floating colored um, boxes, okay? And they actually show you how far away of it is. Like this Alien Easy Station, that's actually the name of the station that we're on now, is 99.7 meters away from us, okay? And if we fly over there, as you can see, that number will drop as we get closer to that beacon, okay? Now, these other ones are different, and of course, apparently my voice is going to decide to crack and die here. Um, these other ones are in red, meaning they are hostile. They're hostile factions. Um, the other ones that are in green are owned by either you or the faction that you belong to, okay? So to change the information on your screen, you're actually going to hit H, and that will bring up the names full-time of, of those different beacons, those different radio signals, okay? Hit H one more time, and it'll actually take away the descriptions completely and just leave you markers with distances. Hit it one more time, and it deletes all of them. Or it doesn't delete them, rather. It just takes them away from being up on your HUD. H one more time will bring it back to default, which is what I like to um, keep it on because you still have a reference on where they are relative to you, but you don't have all of this information clouding your field of view. Okay? And so, with that... I bid you guys farewell. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. Um, please stay tuned. Um, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more future Space Engineers tutorials or any other Misfit Studios videos. Um, the next video we're going to go into depth on a little building and some creating and some fabrication. And we will see you guys there.